3D animation is one of those skill sets that I have wanted to learn forever. Uh, but I've always found myself really intimidated by knowing where to start. You know, there's a lot of softwares, some of them are really expensive, the interfaces of all of them feel really complex. And you know, above all that, it's really hard finding a teacher that I feel like I can trust to help get me to results that I can be proud of. Well, over the past couple months, I've been on this journey to overcome these roadblocks once and for all. And I'm so excited because in this video, we're gonna help you do the same thing. I've teamed up with my good friend, Ducky3D, who is a longtime collaborator of Ezco, but he's an absolute master of the free 3D animation software called Blender. And yes, you heard that right, it is free. We've teamed up to create a course and not only teach you how to confidently navigate it like a pro, but also to go further than that and create three unique projects completely from scratch together. We'll create a 3D animated logo, a terrain mountain scene, and a 3D LED wall in a warehouse with fog and a car and all this cool stuff. But we're giving you this first lesson absolutely free, which is the most important one to be honest, and it's the one teaching you how to confidently navigate the software like a pro and get over any intimidation or roadblocks that you've experienced in the past. So without further ado, here's Ducky3D to help us get started. How's it going? So my name is Nathan Duck, but here on the internet, I go by Ducky3D, and this is the face you're gonna be tired of looking at by the end of the course, because I'll be teaching it. So if you're watching this and have never used Blender before, that's cool. That's why I made this course. I made it for people who don't know how to use Blender, and I'm just really gonna, in a way, hold your hand through this process. And by the end of it, you're gonna really have a gauge, and you're gonna realize, hey, 3D isn't that crazy. It is crazy but it's not that crazy. So I provided a startup file. Now at the beginning of new lessons, we're gonna use this. If we ever start a new lesson and there's nothing there, like a blank scene. So this, using the startup file will get you around having to figure out, okay, what are all the settings? What are the proper settings that I need to have? They're all right here, all done for you. Just what you need. First step, how do you navigate Blender? How do you move things around? So in this startup file, middle mouse click to move around just like this. That is how you're gonna to wanna to do that. Now, if you wanna drag, hold down shift and middle mouse click. How do you get around that if you don't have a three button mouse? So you can go up here to your edit in your preferences. And um, this goes for PC and Mac users. So right over here, go to input and you'll see keyboard and mouse. Go ahead and click emulate number pad. And that's so you can use the numbers up top because I believe you use um, different numbers, it'll do different views. I don't think we'll use that much in the course, but really important, emulate three button mouse. And what that's gonna allow you to use is a button to use it instead. So if you are on Mac, um, you can actually right here, you'll see a thing that says OS key, or you can actually click it and pick the key you wanna use for that feature. So now, if we X out of this, instead of using my middle, you notice I'm using the middle, now I'm gonna hold down Alt. So since I'm on a PC, it's going to be Alt. So now I'm gonna click and click Alt. It's gonna go around. I'll hold down Shift and Alt and I can click and drag. So if you really don't wanna use your three button mouse or can't get one, you are not out of luck and you can go ahead and use it just like that. So right down here, you're gonna see this little key map thing. That is gonna be kind of a reference just in case I miss something. I'm gonna be doing my absolute best to kind of make sure I'm talking about everything I click, everything I touch, so you don't get confused, you don't get lost being someone who hasn't used Blender before. So use this down here as a reference. So back to what I was saying. So let's go ahead and add an object into our scene, Shift A. So what you wanna do is hit click Shift A, so like that, just kind of Shift A, and you can let go of the keyboard too, like Shift A, let go, you still have that navigation, but you can go away. So Shift A, right here on Mesh, let's just go ahead and put an Icosphere in here. All right, so here's what I wanna show you. How do we move this guy? We don't know how to move this guy. Well, right over here is where you're gonna do that. Now this can go away, you can accidentally minimize it. Just hit that button right there, it'll come back. So click this button here, and that's gonna be your move tool. So you can move it here, and you can move it here, and uh, you can move it around if you click that middle one right there. So if you click the middle one, you can kind of freehand it if you want. Rotation, this is your rotate, just like that. Just kind of rotate it around and uh, have a, have a grand old time. This is your scale tool. You can scale it up that way, and you could scale it out that way, and then you could scale it wide that way. There you go. <clears throat> and then if you want all of them together, you can click the transform button. 
So you have rotation, you have your movement, and you have your scale. Now, those are cool, especially if you're on a laptop, you're gonna to wanna to want to use those, but there are shortcuts to those things which we are going to be using in this course, these really basic movements. So if you wanna rotate your object, hit R, just like that. And if you wanna have more control over the rotation, hit R twice. So you hit, pop it twice, and then you can move it around however you want. Scale, just hit S, just like that. And of course, if you wanna scale it on a particular axis, like the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis, hit S, Y, and then it'll scale it on that axis, or S, Z, scale it on the Z axis. That looks like the same exact thing, S, Y. So that'll kind of scale, but it's rotated funny. Let me go ahead and zero it out. Um, so like S, Y, it'll scale it out that way, and then S, Z, scale it out that way. So you can have that kind of control, so S, scale, R, rotate, and then G, move it, just like that. And then of course we can use these and you can access all of those right over here. So you have that control, that's kind of the basic. So recap here, shift, middle click, move around, middle click, world, and then you can click on this object, hit G, and just kind of move them around, have a grand old time, scroll wheel, can zoom. Let me show you something very helpful. And this is gonna save you a lot of a headache. Say you're over here and then you mess something up. Sometimes you can go berserk. If you lose control of your scene, you don't know where to go back, hit the period key. First, we'll click on an object. So click this object where you want to be the center and then click period. Just go ahead, do that. And now your world is gonna rotate around it. So say there's an object that's way over here. You want that to be kind of the center point of the particular place you're working, hit period. Now it's gonna go around that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit G to move him back to where I want him. And I'm gonna hit the period key. There we go. We're back to where we wanna be. Now I'm gonna mention the tilde key. I'm gonna use the tilde key quite a bit in this, um, this course. If you don't know what the tilde key is, it's that button right above the tab key. It's got like this apostrophe thing and the squiggle. That's gonna bring up a pie menu. We're gonna use top a lot. So if I wanna look at this top right here, but I don't want to be, I want it to be completely flat. In a sense, what we're looking through is a lens and um, I forget how to change that, but we're essentially looking at a lens. So there is a slight amount of fisheye, very subtle. Well, tilde key, top, no fisheye. It is completely, perfectly flat. We are looking at the very top. So tilde key, top. But we can also go tilde key, front, left, right, bottom, top, left. But again, tilde key, that gives you control, then you can zoom out, hit G and move it around however you want, just like this. Now, if I'm going too fast, I highly recommend re-watching this, even if I'm going slow. Rewatch this particular lesson and get the practice down now. This will save you from probably getting angry. <laughs> 3D is crazy. So get comfortable with this particular video. Get comfortable with navigating Blender. I'm gonna hit the middle mouse click and go down here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple more objects in here. Don't follow along here, just kinda see what I'm doing. I have a bunch of objects here. I wanna see, in a way, in a, in a, a form, in a way, what's everything in my scene. It's gonna be right up here, it's gonna be called your outliner. This is the outliner world. So say I click on this one, that is that one. Click on this one, it's there. This is your outliner. If you're trying to select a specific object, it's gonna happen a lot in 3D. You wanna find a specific object, but you have too many scenes. Well, you can go over here and find it. And if you double click, you can rename it. So this is the outliner. Remember it, use it. We're gonna use it quite a bit. This is gonna be one of your best friends when trying to navigate your viewport and your scene. Now, another thing you're gonna to wanna to know. So there are gonna be lights in the scene. So what you'll do, go ahead and follow along here, hit shift A, scroll down here and add a point light. And I'm gonna hit G and move it up here. We added a light to the scene. I'm not gonna show you how to turn on the light. It's already on, but don't worry about it. When you wanna go ahead and change the brightness of your light or you wanna change the color of your light, right over here is gonna be what you're gonna wanna use. So in case I forget to mention it throughout the scene, if we're editing the component of a light, go over here, Right here, boom, click that. Now you can change the power, the brightness, and you can go ahead 
change the color. And if you want an exact color, this goes for adding materials, which I'll show in a second. You could paste hex codes right here, or you can add ex exact HSV RGB values. Now, go ahead and follow along with this. Right up here, go to this little button. That's gonna be called Viewport Shading. This is a button that gives you a very quick way to show. So what it's gonna do is gonna cast some light onto your objects so you can see them. Go over here. When we add materials to this scene, you're gonna to wanna to be here. This is the material button. So let's go ahead and click new. Now we have added a material right here. This is the name of that material. You can double click it and call it, I'm gonna just call it met for metal. So here we go, we have this metal and this is your selection. This is how you change the metal. So say, hey, bring this over. Now it's metallic. Now it's really shiny with the roughness. And now it's blue. We have a blue metal in our scene. This is where you're gonna to wanna to do that. Now, there's one more thing right over here that we're gonna use, it's called modifiers. That's gonna be over here, right? I mean, it's also gonna be right over here. Click that and just go ahead and just add, hit this button for this drop down, and click a simple deform and then just slide that angle up. There we go, now we've manipulated our object. So there we go. So this is, this part I just wanna make sure if you're confused as to what over here I'm doing, make sure you see where this is clicked, like world brightness or the transform where you can kind of rotate. All that stuff is in this section right here. Down here is your timeline. You can go ahead and drag it up a little bit, but this is your timeline. This shows you how long your scene is moving. You can press play, you can press pause, you can move backwards but you can see these numbers, that's how many frames we're looking at. And right over here is your end frame. So we're starting at frame one and you're ending at 250 frames. Blender by default, which is in the startup file I provided, it is gonna be 24 frames a second. In this whole course, we're gonna be working with 24 frames a second. But if you happen to wanna change that, and I'll show you that on their export settings of the show, not the show, sorry, the course, I call it a show. Um, it's gonna be called output properties. It looks like a printer. And right here, you can change your frame rate but don't worry about it. Um, here, if you wanna make it 500 frames, you can just type in 500 and then right over here, just drag it up. That is your timeline. There's another thing is these workspaces up here. We're gonna use the shading workspace and what you're gonna wanna do is just go ahead and click that. I'm gonna mention the shading workspace and I'll walk you through it. These are nodes. This is the node version, if we go over here, of this. You can see when I change specular, it changes it on the left as well. So that is the node workspace and you can navigate it similar to navigating this. Here, you just middle click and drag instead of holding down shift, but you can, you can also hold down shift. You want middle click and drag, scroll, scroll wheel, you can find it and say he's gone, you don't know where it is. Just hit the period key and uh, he should come back, but make sure he is selected period key, he'll come back. So same way over here, I lost track of it, period key. Or otherwise, if you open up the shader editor, which is right here, the shading editor, and you can't see it, just scroll wheel, zoom out, and then you find it and you can zoom back in. To add a node, you'll hit shift A, you can add like a shader, click emission, and then click again. And then you can also use G to move a mouse, I mean, move a node around. You can click it, you can use G, and then if you wanna drag something in, you go ahead and pull right here in that and put it right in there and it's gonna say, don't do that. But that is how you use the node system. We're gonna to slightly touch the nodes, uh, the node system, but that is how you use the nodes. There's also gonna be the v, uh, UV editing section here too. You can see my UVs. Layout is the default. If you ever accidentally hit one, just go up here, click layout. You'll be back in your default works, uh, work setup. Now that's it for this intro lesson, how to use Blender. Um, you're ready. I would go ahead and rewatch this one or two more times just to make sure you're comfortable so you can kind of know what to expect for the remainder of this course. But with that being said, on to the next. All right, I hope you guys are feeling way more confident, way less intimidated about 3D animation after watching this lesson. Now remember, this is just the first lesson of our amazing new course where if you wanna to go to the next level, you'll be able to create three videos from scratch, you know, this amazing 3D animated logo, this terrain mountain scene, and then this 3D LED wall in a warehouse. 
and we're gonna teach it all to you completely, hold your hand through every step of the process so you can be really proud of what you're creating. Um, if you're watching still, you can use the code YT20 to save 20% and check it out at the link in the description below. But until next time, hope you've enjoyed this and happy editing.